Welcome back to Thursday Bible Study. I hope that you all had a wonderful Easter, as wonderful as it could be, and that you were able to participate in some of the virtual services that the church held last week during Holy Week. Today, we are back on our regular schedule. So let's begin our time with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to gather. Thank you for reminding us that even when we are apart, we are still the body of Christ. We lift up to you this morning our prayers for those who are sick, for those who are recovering, for our doctors, our nurses, and our hospital staff, for those who are lonely and isolated, for those who are battling depression and anxiety, for those who are afraid. Lord, we need your comfort and healing more than ever in our world. We also lift up to you our praises for relationships that are growing stronger despite the distance, for those who are growing closer to you, for the beautiful spring weather, for the hope and promise of Easter, for all the blessings that you shower on us. Give us eyes to see your hand at work in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for providing what we need. Thank you for making your strength perfect in our weakness. Help us to trust you more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Join with me as we sing together, Be Still My Soul. studying Matthew chapter 25 verses 1 through 13. This is usually called the parable of the ten bridesmaids. Let's read scripture together. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. 
The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Callus covers this parable in chapter 12 of his book. He titles that chapter, I Wish I Could Sell You More. And from the beginning, he points out that there are several characters in this parable, several characters that we meet and some that remain hidden throughout the parable. And so as we look at this parable, just as we've looked at parables in the past, we first ask the question, who are the characters in the parable? Read through the parable again and list out all the characters that you can find. You probably found a few characters right off the bat. There are 10 bridesmaids, there is one bridegroom. If you look closely, you might even notice that there are some sellers of oil. They get mentioned and they're in the backdrop of the story. And there are also some people who are already at the party related to this question of who are the characters is the question of, well, how do we connect those characters um, in, a, in a bit of an allegorical way to us? Like, where do we see ourselves in this parable? Where do we find God in this parable? Take a look at the characters that we've identified. What do you think these characters mean? As we study this parable and many others, we know that the parables Jesus tells are drawing from a, a long, rich history of symbolism within, within the Jewish religion. And this parable is no exception. And so here we have a bridegroom. Well, who do we think the bridegroom is? This is a thinly veiled uh, allegory here. And I, I say that because there is a long tradition of God being identified as the bridegroom of Israel. If we go back into our Old Testament, over and over we have descriptions of God as the bridegroom and Israel as the bride. And so when our gospel writers use this imagery, Matthew here, John, throughout John, uses this idea that the, the people of faith are the bride and, and God is the bridegroom. And, and for John, Jesus is the bridegroom. That's how one of the ways that John proves the case that Jesus is the Messiah is that he puts Jesus in the position of the bridegroom. And so here in Matthew, we have this image of bridegroom coming up again. So, so we see bridegroom, and if we are Jesus' audience, we should immediately think, oh, the bridegroom is God. If the bridegroom is God, then the bridesmaids are, are the, the people of faith people of faith who have prepared in different ways, some in more wise ways, some in more foolish ways, for the, for, for the, the, the coming of the bridegroom. And since they did not know the day or the hour, those who watched with preparation were rewarded, and those who watched but were ill-prepared were punished by not being allowed into the party. One surprise that you might have noticed is that Jesus does not condemn the bridesmaids who do not share their oil. As we are hearing this parable, we might think, oh, this is a story about generosity. And Jesus will say, and what you are supposed to do is share with those who do not have. But this is not what Jesus says. He, he calls the bridesmaids that have extra oil, he calls them wise. And the ones without enough oil, he calls foolish. And he commends those who had gotten the extra oil, even though they do not choose to share it. The second surprise that you might have picked up on is that the bridegroom seems to not even recognize the five foolish bridesmaids. And this is weird because if you've been in a wedding party, you know that the wedding party is made up of friends and relatives of the bride and groom. It would be very odd for the 
bridegroom not to recognize the close friends or relatives of his bride-to-be, and yet he acts as if he's never seen them before. The final surprise that you might have picked up on is this. At the end of the parable, Jesus summarizes it by saying, therefore keep awake. But in fact, all ten bridesmaids fell asleep. Perhaps the biggest surprise twist of this parable is that its meaning is pretty straightforward. Jesus concludes it succinctly, saying, Therefore keep awake, for you do not know the day or the hour. In other words, be prepared. And this is a lesson that he emphasizes over and over in this particular section of Matthew's Gospel. And so that leads us to a question for reflection, which is, when have you been caught unprepared? So when have you felt unprepared? For some of us, our minds go to that camping trip years ago where we forgot to pack enough water, or maybe to a test way back in our childhood that we just did not study enough for. As adults, we feel unprepared sometimes for the challenges that come with raising a family, the challenges that come with being part of a marriage. There are many difficulties that come our way that we may be more or less prepared for, things that we ought to have seen coming and things that we never saw coming. One area of life where we often feel unprepared is when it comes to facing our own mortality. This is where our book goes with this question, when have you been caught unprepared? I think during this time in particular, there are a lot of us thinking about mortality, thinking about what it would mean to catch the coronavirus, what it would mean to be sick, what it might mean to be the 20% of people who are hospitalized or the four to five percent who are killed by this virus. And that becomes very real as we see those numbers of infections going up and up every single day. Now, it doesn't take a pandemic to cause us to examine our mortality. The older we get, the more time we spend reading obituaries, the less time we spend reading about engagements. We spend more time at funerals than at weddings. But it's not just that final surprise that challenges us, making us wonder if we are prepared. There are many surprises in life, many opportunities, for us to find ourselves unprepared. And when we are faced with these storms, there's a real question around where is our faith? And is our faith strong enough to weather it? What catches the bridesmaids off guard is that the bridegroom has arrived and some are ready and some are not. And this is uh, maybe my biggest fear in that question, am I prepared in my faith? My fear is that if I am not, God might be at work in magnificent ways all around me, and I'll never even recognize it. When we are prepared with our faith, we have eyes to see the miracle of God at work. And we know that there will be surprises. We know that there will be unexpected moments that come up. We know even that at some point, we will even have the unexpected experience of encountering the bridegroom. And when we do, will we have enough oil? Will we have stored up the right kinds of treasure? Will our faith be where it needs to be? These are questions that Callus asks, questions I think that are important for us to ask as we go through our faith journeys. And that takes us to our final reflection question. 
What is one step you can take this week to be more prepared in your faith journey? Thank you for being part of Thursday Bible Study. Until next time, may the Lord bless you, be gracious to you, and give you peace.